aside from trade, there was another area in which the rise of Islam had a galvanizing effect on European economic life. Hopefully I've sketched to you so far the, the extraordinary importance of the Islamic triumphs for the, the emergence of trade in Europe. And the second thing was agricultural technology. And I won't dwell on this in great detail because um, Munir Sheikh last Friday very ably sketched the impact that this had um, on the economic life of Spain. He pointed out that before the Muslim conquest, most of Spain had um, lain fallow, was never cultivated. The Romans and the Visigoths had supported a few irrigation schemes. There were some spectacular Roman aqueducts remaining there, for instance. But Spain's population is believed to have tripled in the two centuries following the Muslim conquest. And this was made possible in large measure by the large-scale introduction of sophisticated techniques of irrigation, again from the Near East. Um, the water wheel, for instance, was the obvious example that, that he gave. And this is reflected in the Spanish language. Again, you'll see some of these words in the, the list that I dished out. Um, for instance, even today, a common word in the Spanish countryside for a little bridge which um, takes water across uh, a little valley is um, alcantarilla, what I encountered recently in Spain. Alcantarilla, which simply comes from the Arabic word alcantara, meaning a bridge. There's even a town in Spain, of course, called Alcantara. Um, Eastern crops also introduced, particularly into Spain, also into Muslim Sicily and those other Muslim bits of um, southern Italy. Um, so we find things like sugar, rice, oranges, um, lemons, aubergines, artichokes, apricots, cotton and so forth, hitting the shores of Europe for the first time. Also in Muslim Spain, perhaps even more significantly, we find new techniques of mining being developed. <coughs> Roman mining had been very much a desultory hit or miss affair. Um, drawing on older Near Eastern traditions, the Muslims introduced new techniques of excavating, of propping up shafts, and of ventilation, most importantly, that allowed the natural resources of Spain to be exploited as never before. And in particular, we find Spain becoming a great center for the export of um, iron and copper, and again this thing called cinnabar from which they got mercury. And these new Moorish techniques of mine construction and ventilation radiated out throughout Europe and become the basis, for instance, for the, um, the mining communities of Lower Saxony, um, who went on to, to construct and man some of the great silver mines throughout Europe. The techniques that they were using um, were originally introduced into Europe um, by the Moors of Spain. Um, another thing that, that is certainly worth mentioning, although it was of no economic use, hasn't really been discussed so far, was music. Again, Spain was the channel for this, um, and it received its great boost with this famous fashionable person, almost the, the Beau Brummel of his age, uh, Ziryab, who came from Cordoba, no, he came from Baghdad and died in Cordoba in 857. And through Ziryab and his pupils, very sophisticated instruments for the first time become, become widespread in Europe. This is his name. I take it it's a Persian name. I don't know what it means. So we find, most obviously, the lute. The, the English word lute simply comes from the Arabic word al oud which even today is the standard Arabic word for the instrument. We find types of flutes introduced into Europe for the first time. We find a great range of drums. And the minstrels and the troubadours who radiated out from medieval Provence were largely drawing on the very sophisticated uh, folk musical traditions of, of Spain. It was easy for troubadours and minstrels to cross this um, iron curtain between Christendom and Islam to perform one day in a Christian court and then travel and perform in a Muslim court. And they were a great um, instrument of um, cultural osmosis again. In fact, in English, one of our most popular rural traditions is the famous Morris dancers. Um, I don't know if you've been to England and seen these um, usually rather soppy but half-drunk 
figures dressed in white with bells around their arms and legs sort of jumping about and hitting sticks and generally looking a little bit absurd. Um, <laughs> you have them, okay. Well, you'll be fascinated to learn that Morris dancers are actually Moorish dancers. That's the origin of the word. And the traditions, as you'd expect, have been greatly transformed over the ages and uh, through the process of migration from Spain to England. But scholars accept that that's the origin of this type of dance. Troubadours as well, the word is said to come from um, an Arabic root meaning delight, usually applied to delight inspired by musical performance. And one of the things these troubadours did was to introduce new poetic forms into Europe through song. Generally, Roman poetry had a fairly simple system of rhythm and didn't bother with rhyme. For the first time in the 13th and 14th century in Europe, we start to find the consistent use of rhyming in poetry. We also find um, types of strophic poetry, hitherto unknown in Europe, and it's thought, although obviously these things are oral traditions and can't be definitively documented, that they come from uh, Muslim Spain. Also, uh, prosodic forms um, in popular culture, something called the villancico, which is still quite widespread in, in Spanish rural society, is an almost exact carrying over into a romance language of an Arabic poetic form known, known as the zajal, which was actually developed by the Muslims of Spain. It wasn't something they brought with them. Um, Arabic literature flourished and was most um, innovative in, in Muslim Spain. Another key impact of medieval Islam on Europe was the introduction of paper. Paper, of course, was not an Arabic invention. In fact, the early Arabic word for paper, which is karid, is actually a Chinese word. It's not an Arabic word at all. And the legend has it that um, the Abbasids took some Chinese prisoners because the Chinese were very secretive and always guarded the, the secrets of, of these, um, these inventions like silk, which for hundreds of years, everybody wanted to know how silk was made. Um, and um, it was only in the Middle Ages that, uh, that the knowledge spread outside China. Similarly with paper, it's said that um, in the 8th century, some Chinese soldiers and sages, mandarins presumably, were taken prisoner and they were only... Uh, released on condition that they showed their captors how to make paper. So we find in the year 800, we have an accurate date for this, the first paper mill is established out outside China and it happens in Baghdad. Europe is very slow to catch on. The first paper mill in Europe doesn't appear until the 14th century. Um, nonetheless, paper was exported from the Islamic world and we find um, medieval uh, Latin manuscripts um, increasingly written on paper rather than things like vellum as they had been previously. So all of these things are uh, cultural areas in which medieval European life was profoundly influenced by what was going on across the Mediterranean. And more generally one could remark on things like uh, just the general style of refined living, um, the way in which people used textiles, the way in which they ate, the order that food was served at banquets and so forth. Um, all of these things were imported generally from the East.